I do, you really need to have more range than what you see on the page in your rehearsal and your ensembles. Well, I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you why that the notes and the highest notes that you have in your ensembles is not where your range needs to be. Your range really needs to be a lot higher than what you have to play in your music. And the reason is you need to have a cushion of three to four notes of range above and beyond what you are required to play in your ensembles from orchestral to concertos to lead trumpet to rock and I'm about ready to demonstrate a couple of those right now. Having more range simply allows you to play a wide variety of music without killing yourself. And here's a really awesome piece that I love. I've played before and I plan on playing it again. Concerto in la bemol, or otherwise known as Vivaldi Concerto in A-flat for piccolo trumpet. Um, now, I don't happen to have a piccolo handy, so I'm going to use my big horn, which means I'm going to be using my piccolo fingers, fingerings on the big horn because this is a transposition that I'm doing, and of course some of the notes may be a little bit out of tune on the big horn. But I'm just going to go down to one note before, oh, let's see, where are we? Maybe near the very end, like one note before number three. That's the second line from the bottom of this first move at Allegro. And that was a live recording of me now. No dubbing, no punching out, no punching in, no nothing. And that just gives you an example. I did that on my big um, B-flat trumpet. So, classical music requires chops, requires range. And if your range is an E-flat on trumpet or a concert D-flat, and that's it, you won't be able to play this particular piece because you'll be killing yourself with the pressure. So that's why we have to have more range than what we really need um, when we're looking at a piece of music. You, to play this piece and make it sound good and easy and with a gorgeous tone, you can't have just a concert D-flat range. You really need a concert G-flat or concert um, G, really, to have that big cushion from what you have to play on the page to what you have in your practice room on your face. So that was Antonio Vivaldi, concerto in A-flat for piccolo trumpet. Here we're looking at near the very end of the first movement of the Humble Concerto. And actually, if you play the Humble Concerto on an E-flat trumpet, it's a million times easier. But you will see a lot of people play it on their big horn. In fact, I'm going to do a little bit right now. Um, some of the stuff that I'm going to be playing goes up to a high C on the B-flat trumpet or concert B-flat. If your range is only a high C or high D, you're going to have a lot of trouble with this piece. And any piece that has high C range, you have no cushion. You're going to be playing on the skin of your teeth. You're going to be using too much mouthpiece pressure. You're probably out of tune. You'll probably miss a lot of notes. You won't have any endurance. It's not going to be fun. That's another reason why you have to have a lot more range than what's called for in a particular piece. I'm starting at, oh, it looks like measure 273. It's a second line down, right near the end of this first movement. And that was just a little excerpt from the very end of the first movement of the Hummel. Went up to high C on my B-flat trumpet. Lord knows if I had a high C or a high D range on trumpet, I would be in serious, seriously big time trouble trying to play this, and especially in a live performance.
you have to have more range. On a piece like this, you definitely would like to have an F on trumpet. That's a concert E flat above high C at a minimum to be able to go through this and make it sound easy and also for it to be easy for you to play. Here we have a slow rock ballad. It's a second trumpet part, but don't be fooled by that uh, because the second trumpet part here is actually playing the lead part. As you know, Maynard is playing the solo. So don't let the sun go down on me. If you look at the very beginning, it's not really that horrible. In fact, this one never really gets that horrible um, for the lead part, which is played by the second trumpet player. But still, you have to have more than the high E flat that you're going to see there on the first line. That was the first line and a note for the second trumpet part on Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me. And it went up to an E flat. If you can play an E flat in your practice or an E or even an F, you're going to really have a lot of trouble with that line because you need to have at least, at least a double A flat. So you can be nailing this without killing yourself and playing on the skin of your teeth. Another example why you need to have more range than what you think. That's a little lick in Birdland right after measure S. And then of course you got the beginning. Hey, we're looking at the first part of the first trumpet part for spinning wheel. And you know, you have two measures of rest. This is a rock piece, obviously rock, funk, whatever you want to call it. And look at the first couple measures for the first trumpet part. You're gonna be in it on a high C sharp. And lordy lordy, if you just have a high C sharp or high D as your max range, you're going to have a lot of trouble playing some of these fun rock and pop charts. Uh, there's no question about it. We're not even talking about the super tough, top tier lead trumpet stuff. Um, um, actually, this does get tough. The spinning wheel Maynard's version does get tough. But I'm just talking about this first line, for example. To put some meat on the bone and have some sizzle, you have to have a lot more than a high C sharp or a high D on your B flat trumpet to be able to play stuff like this. You really do. Otherwise, you're going to kill yourself. You're going to be out of tune. You're going to be wondering why you're using too much mouthpiece pressure. You're going to be having endurance problems. Another reason why you need to have more range than what you actually have to play when you're looking at a piece of music. So I just did that the first couple of measures there just to show that you do have to have more range than just with this, what's on the page, otherwise you're going to run into problems. A demonstration and explanation why you really have to have more range than what you think. It's amazing how many students I get in my course and they'll tell me that they have a high D or a high E flat and when I ask them, well what typically do you have to play in your big band or your rock band or your orchestra or your community Broadway shows, and when they tell me high C's and D's, I just kind of cringe because um, that's tough, folks. To have a high D max range and you're playing up to high D in your ensembles, I mean, that's a recipe for disaster and pain and torture and bad endurance problems, everything. you got to get your range up. I hope that some of the examples I provided, even to you classical players, <laughs> I, I provided an example of the Hummel and also the Valdi Concerto. I mean, it really makes sense. You have to get your range way, way well above what you are required to play in your daily performance and rehearsals. I'm running some very good Black Friday specials that are gonna, gonna conclude um, this evening. I'm gonna try to get this up. Um, if I don't get it up in, up in time, I'll put it up below, look below, and um, I've had a couple of people request that I extend it until tomorrow or Monday. So depending on when I get this video up, if it doesn't come up until mid-evening, that doesn't give a lot of people time to react to this particular video. 
in which case look down the notes and I might extend it until tomorrow. But really, uh, my programs, I'm cutting some of them almost in half just for this weekend, just to get you involved so you can see what all the buzz is about, why people are getting good results. So trumpetsizzle.com, I'm Kurt Thompson. And look down in the description below this video, you're gonna see some links where you can click on and start learning how to play first trumpet, lead trumpet, and a rock band, swing band, jazz band, or if you just want to up your game for concertos and pick work. Um, you got to take advantage of these programs now. They will resume at their normal offering price uh, probably late tonight or late Monday night. You'll have to look down in the description to see what I decided to do. Bye-bye for now.